And every time I sing it, I think of that staircase. I still think about going down there and or being thrown out of there. One of the two. Well, I mean, when Van Hal turned up, it was like, this is going to be great. and didn't work. Is it getting worse? I haven't revisited his early work, but I'm sure some of that would seem pretty distasteful if he brought it out in 2020. Do you know what I mean? My shakshuka and my eggs are coming on. Cracking, though. So I'm after a cooking show if anyone's listening. Because uh, you're in a battle against, um, well, the biggest rapper in the world. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it is an interesting yeah. battle. Didn't think I'd be saying that after I came off at the dry bar. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, he surprised us with it as well. He dropped it. Yeah. Yeah. He did, didn't he? He did. They can do that, those bigger artists, can't they? Yeah, they can. They Our artwork has to be into Spotify like six months before or something. So next time, at least I know. You can't just do it. Um, and of course, it's an album not without its controversy, Eminem's mm -hmm. one. And you've already been quite clear about how you feel about one of the lyrics that he decided to use. Yeah. Um, um, do, you, do you try and understand where the mentality comes from? I mean, where Eminem, who, look, has been known mm -hmm. for being um, contrary, shall we say, mm -hmm. for his entire career. But then when he decides to use in a rap, something that is so horrific yeah it does it, uh, I, first and foremost i almost feel like i shouldn't be talking about it because it's not there are so many people still grieving and suffering because of that atrocity that it kind of feels and will do like, for the rest of their life yeah they're never going to get over it so i, I just like to say that from like the get-go but I also felt like it would be wrong to not address it um, when, <clears throat> excuse me, it got like got so much traction that it just just felt like a line was crossed. And and also, there's a huge. I know that shock in our there's a place for it. There always has been. But I just don't know what's going through your head when you think that's all right. I don't know. And. I don't think it's got anything to do with... I mean, obviously, it feels closer to our hearts because it's, it's home, isn't it? But um, don't know. I don't know what goes through your mind when you think that's all right. Is he jumping the shark? I don't know. Is he masquerading something else and he just wants people to talk about it rather than... Which is what's happening, so I don't know. Hmm. And I guess to perpetuate that, mm. talking about it more is, yeah, yeah. is bizarre. Yeah. But, it, it, but it is the disconnect being on the other side of the Atlantic. Mm. But you can't have an emotional disconnect yeah. to that, what happened that night at yeah. the Manchester no. Arena. You, you can't. I don't think so. Especially like if you are, you know, people in the creative industry who have that empathetic kind of makeup where... You write about feelings and how things, uh, you know, the good and the bad. But that's that's how we're made up, isn't it? You know, to to feel empathy for others. It's always been part of it, his his thing. But um, is it getting worse? I haven't revisited his early work, but I'm sure some of that would seem pretty distasteful if he brought it out in 2020. But it's cartoon violence, not a reference to actual violence. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. That's the difference, Yeah, I think, here. that you know, Rap music has always, and some like myself who's been listening to it for over 35 <clears throat> years, it, it's, it's always been there. Yeah, and yeah. a lot of it has just been reporting violence that people see on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. But to use this imagery... For no reason other than it seems that it rhymes. Yeah. I mean, I, di I didn't see the deep philosophical context no. of what he was trying to achieve no. with this. It's, you know, it, I guess it, it's got to come from shock value. And it's a tough one. Like I said, like, I, I almost feel like it's not my job to keep, well, not to keep talking about it. I was asked the other day, and 
I just feel like it's just really disrespectful. No, we we have to have that conversation because <laughs> at some point, Spurs, Man United, I, I'm Spurs, <laughs> and and we we're, we're both we both seem to be in a kind of race to mediocrity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll like, meet you there. Yeah. Which is, which is I think on Five Live last night, one of the pundits was saying that you know, Man United have to accept they're a Europa League team. So when they start. I know, yeah. Oof, well, easy. It wasn't me that said it before, yeah. Liam. You launch at me <laughs> from across the desk. It wasn't me, but it, but it is that accepting because you, um, you are, you, you remember. For instance, I mean, I feel sorry for the ten and twelve year olds, like, because yeah, yeah. that they're in that. Yeah. Like Moyes may have been there first. Yeah. First. Well, it's like the City fans who are like ten or fifteen now. Like yeah. all they've ever known is great stuff. Yes. But like I had friends who were going. You know, when they're in Division Two, but they're still getting thirty thousand. To be absolutely fair to yeah, see, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. And it pains me to say it, but <laughs> you've always had a fantastic fans and, and crowd. Yeah, it's just tough for us because we thought it might be two years, three years. Now it's looking like from this point, it's, it's going to be a, you know, just feels like such a mess from the top down. So Ed Edward would go as as Man United fans have been well, asking forever. Well, I saw or some have. Yeah, well, it's saw, it's well, I've just seen today that I'm, and the and the profit's gone up or something. So I can't. I don't think they'll get rid of him anytime soon because as long as he's bringing the money for them. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, he should do obviously, but there's people who should be making football decisions and like, look, I don't work at the club, so I don't know who's in what role and whatever. Oh. And there are people far more qualified than me to talk on it at length. But I don't know. Do you si go? The signings, yeah, go a lot. Yeah, 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 go a lot. The signings that we've made, like James Van Bissack and Maguire, right? Good signings. So you never know. We need somebody this window, and we're faffing around. And that Fernandez should have been done straight away. Then we're letting him play, and he's going down in the eighth minute. And you're like, oh. <laughs> we're just coming laughing stock. But we always have to pay twenty million more than everyone else, don't we? Yeah, of course. Because we sell calendars, and you know, as soon as that everywhere. name. Comes up Manchester United. It just goes through the roof. Yeah, it? and you, you're kind of. Are you? Do you think at the bottom of that cycle now, and that you're on the way I up? God, I mean, what do you think? This. You know, it's. Well, I mean, when Van Hal turned up, it was like this is going to be great, and it didn't work. And Mourinho turned up, this is going to be great, and then with Ole, it was. There was that bounce for a while. Yeah, but be us. <laughs> mm, yeah, but I don't know. I don't know. It just feels a bit deflated, and like. <laughs> I love Solskjaer, but coming out and saying that, you know, I don't know what he said, but along the lines of we were kind of in the... Yeah, we got beat 1-0, but they had two disallowed. They hit the post. They were all over us. So we're miles behind them. Miles. Aren't we 30 points behind, I think, or something at this point? Something ridiculous. Something stupid. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. Let's talk about the music. Drowning in your look as you're taking me above And I know it's not allowed Hanging off the cloud, the city never sleeps. We're going to deep, but we know it's not allowed. Hanging off. The, there's a lot of the lot, a lot of the set <laughs> goes down well, but yeah, I just, I just don't think it, because they come from that place of of like moments that you've lived like that front crawl down the crowd that's about getting out of a particular nightclub in manchester and it being so crowded that you are i was front crawling the crowd to try and find this person that i wanted to speak to and every time i sing it i think of that staircase i still think about going down there and or being thrown out of the one of the two but yeah I still do it and i don't know maybe i'm over sentimental but but um it still means something as you get deeper and deeper into this game, you know, six albums deep, mm. um, do you tend to look more forward than back? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. And if it is backwards, it's on um, perhaps what you've done wrong and I can correct it, right. you know, rather than me talking about, you know, being a jilted lover or whatever, or, you know, like something's gone wrong, a relationship, whatever. Always, that boy girl thing will always be present, I guess, in pop music. Mm. But I just, I guess, I tried to touch on different things this time around because I've done the other stuff to death. Have you found a way to be comfortable with the time off? No, no, still a big issue. Um, like a jack in the box, and I just, I want to be busy, and no one really prepares you for that. You can go and do Glastonbury. 
and I think we had like last year was our biggest and best year we've ever had. And when we started the year, we'd have, we wouldn't have believed if we got the offers that we got in terms of headline and Kendall and that festivals that mean a lot to a lot of people and are you know really special. And we got to go and just felt like things kind of fell into place. But then you you don't have to do for three months and you're like, oh, what now? And it's such an incredible feeling that it's nothing for six months and then it's up. And we're not um, Arctic's on Muse, so we're not going to Buenos Aires or we're not going to Mexico City. We're not going to, you know, we're not going all over the world. We kind of have small, sorry, sporadic but big gigs and then nothing for a lot of the time. So it's, you know... So that's, I mean, after six albums to still be in that situation, mm. is there a sense of dread oh, as you yeah. approach it? Oh, yeah, 100%. I can feel it coming before we go on for the last thing. You know the kind of thing. But then it's like, you know, I, I've got to be difficult on national radio because, you know, there are worse jobs to have. For sure. So I don't want to be... Sure. I, no, I the last, The last thing I want to be is, like, coming across like that. It's just a personal thing. Well, that's up to me, though, isn't it? Do you know what I mean, my Shaq Shuka and my eggs are coming on, cracking, though. <laughs> So I'm after a cooking show if anyone's listening. Hello, now that you've seen just the briefest snippet of an interview that I've just done, surely you want more of it. Surely you want the half hour, the 40 minutes. Well, BBC Sounds Headliners Podcast is where you need to go. And if you don't go there, your life is going to be rubbish. I, I'm just being real with you. <laughs>